Hello, my friends. Chidweave, a chorja. Salut, mes amis. Uh, uh, kon, uh, konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Uh, wherever you are. Uh, uh, nice to have you here. What else can we say? Um, all right, maybe that, that will, we'll stop there. But today we're going to talk about different languages and, uh, well, basically how and why to learn a second language or a foreign language. So um, we're going to basically look at, it's fun, it's just really enjoyable to do it, uh, so why not? You know, you like having fun, don't you? Uh, and uh, it's good for your mind in many ways. Um, and uh, it also can connect you to a culture or a people or um, a way of thinking or like even a civilization or a state of mind, man. So um, that's the why we're going to look at and then uh, get into like how, like what you need to do or and um, probably, you know, in general, some of this stuff will be kind of obvious, but uh, we'll just go over that kind of quickly. But then I'm going to talk about um, things like ways to deal with obstacles and some easy opportunities that I think get overlooked for how to learn a language, you know. And um, so like me, I teach English, right? That's my job, is a, English as a second language. So, you know, kind of qualified in this field um, for once. <laughs> um, but uh, also I'm learning, you know, f uh, some languages. Basically, I'm learning Irish at the moment. Last night I was at some uh, event Speaking Irish, strangers, uh, 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 whatever. So I don't know what I'm, um, that's not like I'm thinking in English and then translating. That's just like in the moment I'm thinking of one word and where can that lead and then bit by bit by bit and so and you start slow but then you can build up faster and that's what we did with our own languages and then you can do that with other languages um i won't you know torture you too much with this but um ça ça serait la même chose en français uh, je suis aussi je je uh, j'apprends le français uh, mais en fait uh, ça fait uh, longtemps depuis je uh, j'utilise uh, la langue uh, très très souvent mais Quand je peux, j'aime beaucoup uh, utiliser la langue et c'est incroyable en fait. Now, so that's French, right? I'm saying, oh yeah, I like speaking French when I can. I was start, I'm learning that more before. It's not really the focus right now, but I love it. Anytime I meet a French person, I pull out French and I, I talk to them. And uh, it's good for me learning the language. But kind of one of the things we're going to talk about is um, you can, it helps you connect with people. So like I like just learning um, uh, thank you. In different languages, like Teshe Kurder, Turkish, or Uf, Jekwi, Czech, um, or and uh, which Jakuyo, uh, Ukrainian, Spasibo, Russian, you know, Danka or whatever, um, German, you know, uh, what else we got? Um, you know, it goes on and on. There's a bunch of them, right? I know quite a few, but just for that, because then you know, I'm talking to someone and I know, say, I know their, um. Italian, instead of going, oh, thank you, I can go, grazie. And it's just like a little wink of like, I know there's a depth to yourself which is not accessible because you're using, you know, my language. And so I'm trying to meet you there and say, you know, hey, I know there's this other level of wh where you are, you're, the way you're thinking. Because, you know, our language, it does have an uh, effect on the way we think because um, it's the way the, the language is constructed, you know. The certain words which are untranslatable, like you can't, you know, express the idea in another language. Like chaselig is Dutch, and it means something like cozy, but it's not quite cozy. That's like the closest word in English. But it's the kind of like, you know, like a little coffees with friends, and, uh, you know, that's chaselig, like little social kind of thing. But also like, oh, little cute little, you know, um, furniture and everything's kind of neat, neat and tidy. And, ah, oh, that's chaselig, you know. So it's like, there's no real translation there. Um or, uh, yeah, you get the idea. So there is a, a way in which um, speaking a language, um, like that that uh, affects who you are, 
people, at least on the level of form and your, you know, ego that you're playing around with and having fun, you know, living this life, being whoever you want to be, playing the roles, um, expressing your soul's curiosity. Um, but also, like, just um, we, in your own language, you, you're most masterful in your own language. And so there's least, um, like, there's least um, friction or resistance um, against the flow of your uh, intelligence and your um, intention, and what you're trying to say. So in English, I'll go, oh, how do I say that? Um, and even in English, you know, like and sometimes be like, what am I trying to say? Certain ideas can be too complicated where it's like, it's tricky to articulate it well. Um, but, you know, then in another language, it's just even, even crazier, right? So, you know, sometimes people... Um, meet someone if here's the thing english speakers unfortunately because you know we like the british empire took over the whole world kind of and if america which was part of the empire but then broke free and then that's kind of the new empire you know anglo american empire or whatever um but you have this very dominant um work area where um people can just speak english you don't really need to learn another language because all the other countries are learning them learning it um so what that has created is the certain people who will be like they're speaking English and they've never learned a second language. And so they don't understand what's going on when someone's like, Hi, I, uh, hello, I, uh, I've, I, uh, I go to, to park yesterday and, and they go, Oh, I'm familiar with this phenomenon. This is a, a stupid person whose brain isn't working very well. That's why they're slow. Subconsciously, that's what some people will think. And they, if they had, learned another language they would understand like no no this person could be like albert einstein some genius but just their knowledge of this language is limited so that doesn't mean that their their intelligence it's not a reflection of their intelligence necessarily um they could have just started learning the language um and so that's something that you know one piece of awareness that you get from learning a language which is good and then um yeah you get a lot of a lot of empathy and uh sympathy for people struggling, well, not struggling, but I mean doing the work to learn a language because it does take work. It's like, you know, going to the gym to build up your body, you you know, study a language. And uh, it's definitely, it's not, not as hard as you think. Um, but, uh, you know, like to get to a very advanced level, you know, you need commitment. And um, so, you know, you get more empathy for that too. But yeah, so talking about, yeah, we're going to talk about the, the how as well, like these, how to do this stuff. Um, First, a little bit of music. You want to have a, have a guitar right here? I call that three chords, one destiny. So I'm putting on a little accent there. Okay, well, here's the thing with, um, I don't really have a plan for the order of this. I'm just going to ramble. Um, I slept three hours last night. <laughs> so let's see how we go. Woo! Um, accents uh, uh, can actually be useful for um, speaking a language. Like if you, like say when I speak French, I put on the French accent, right? And uh, I could talk like this, or if I'm in English, or... You know, there is a guitar, and uh, I thought it was very interesting. Uh, and um, like your, even your face kind of gets you get into the role that you're kind of living this character. But I find that that actually does improve your pronunciation, and so that could help someone understand you. If I'm like, um, uh, je suis uh, Jamie, and um, a uh, uh, pense tu que c'est ça serait possible, you know, it does. The French people go, what the? Car list the tabernacle, because you comprend pas. Qu'est-ce que il dit? I don't understand what he's saying. What the hell? You know. Um, but if you you put on the accent, it helps a bit with comp them understanding you. But also, I think you get into the musicality of the language, and you can start to enjoy it as like music, sort of. But also, like um, yeah, your pronunciation's improved. So if you you know people like uh oh. now, so maybe someone's like, oh, I am Russian. I don't you know I. My uh, pronunciation is not good, uh, you know. They can, okay, try to, like, impersonate. Practice your impersonations. Just try to copy, like, 
on your own, watch a movie of someone and they've got some character, try to just shadow them. They say something and you say it after them. Try to make it the same. And just like I've always had like a love of like impersonations and putting on ridiculous accents and whatnot. So I find that puts me in good stead with languages because like I can hear um, the sound of like the way so it's not just the words. It's like what's the, the tone and the feeling and the kind of rhythm and the energy. Um, so that's one thing to do. Um, and uh, anyway, so um, why to learn a language, right? Well, uh, it's fun, right? So, you know, um, it's a task. It's a anything, you know, you're learning a challenge, you know, that can be satisfying in itself doing something like that. But language is, language is very unique because it's the way we express our thoughts. Um, so you can basically um, get a whole new code, system of codes for expressing your personality. So the sides to you, who you are, you might think you know who you are. And okay, maybe you do to some extent, but there is there are all these different sides of you which you have no idea about because you haven't been expressing yourself in Russian or Italian or you know um, Japanese and so there's different aspects of your personality which would be drawn out by you know using the lens of that culture's linguistic coding to like express yourself um, and you know there's ways like the way things are organized can be you know certain like French is kind of flowery and, you know, elaborate and quite long. That kind of reflects, you know, they have this appreciation for beauty and kind of, um, yeah, I would say, I don't know, a certain sort of, yeah, perhaps, I don't know, I'm an outsider, but I would say there's a certain appreciation for beauty or elegance or um, maybe like pe uh, peacock tail feathers kind of thing as well. Like, um, I don't know. So I'd say that that's kind of like a little reflection or, you know, German seeming to seemingly being very efficient and they would just, you know, combine words and things. Although it's meant to be difficult to learn, so um, I don't know. Who knows? But anyway, um, but it, so say, uh, yeah, the fun of learning a language. So um, uh, what could we say? Well, so, hmm. What do you think? What should I say? Should I take a, gl a glass of water? Here we go. Take the whole glass. Take a sip. So, um, yeah, you. Uh, it's like say the astronauts going to the uh, the moon, right? So, like, oh yeah, we're so pumped and excited to go to the moon. It's gonna be so cool. Um, you know, Earth, Earth, whatever. You know, but yeah, the moon. It's over there. The grass is greener up there. You know, oh there. Let's go. And then they got when they got to the moon. Apparently, they kind of like looked, or when they're near there anyway, they kind of looked back at Earth and were like shocked like, to see that's that's the real um, glory, the real um, jewel which they were um, to be exposed to there or um, blessed to see. Is that they were, you know, so it was like, oh, seeing the Earth from space and seeing it just hovering in the middle of nothingness and how we're all together all you know sides of every argument we're all on this one planet surrounded by nothingness and um you know the pale blue dot kind of thing that carl sagan talked about which you could youtube if you're interested that's good stuff um but and so in a similar way so you they went to the moon and that's when they the only once they'd gone to the moon could they really see earth properly and understand where they where they had been all along so with the language you learn, say, when I started to learn French, I was like, wait a minute. This is how, it's like, je vais aller. I am going to go. Like, wait, it just clicks. It's like literally just clicks together like that. And it was kind of very, even knowing how the language worked, just in general, like, that was, I was learning that and knew. And so once you've got two points, two coordinates, you can, it brings in a new dimension. You can kind of, you know, make a line or you can kind of trace a pattern, right? And so, or once you've um, had a change in temperature, you get an idea of what temperature is. Or say once I um, have uh, got glasses, which I don't, you know, use kind of, but um, usually. Um, but uh, when um, they, they uh, I, would, I would see a little bit better with them. 
And so once I first had that, I could see, oh, that's like clearer. Whoa. And then not, I didn't just know two things of like, okay, this is my normal vision. And then this is the clearer vision. I also learned what vision is in general, because I'd experienced an alteration, a modification of in that medium or along that continuum, a, a change in that phenomenon. So in the same way, like learning a, a second language, you, it basically you start to understand what languages are in general. And so you really learn what your own language is um, once, you know, because you're, once you're getting this kind of metalinguistic understanding of like, oh, this is how the language works for your, say me, it was French. But then I'm looking back over my shoulder at English, like, whoa, all these things I've just been saying without thinking about it. Well, I can see how that connects to what I'm learning in this new language. And so it's kind of like you're learning your own language by learning another. Um, so, but, so why else is it fun? You can meet people, you can connect with people, you know, who have the, like, I see someone speaking Irish. I can speak Irish to them. It's simple, but like last night I was doing this and, you know, I'm making lots of mistakes, but I'm able to get better so I can understand, you know, like a fair bit or whatever. And, um, or if, you know, there's a little joy when you speak a language and you notice someone else who speaks it and you can have a little interaction. It's like a little private, little beautiful connection, you know? Um, and, um, so yeah. And you can, you can, you can kind of, yeah, be funny. Like just pull it out of nowhere. You overhear two people speaking something and you happen to know the language. For one thing, you know what they're talking about. They might be talking about you, <laughs> but, uh, also, yeah, you can say like, where do I drop a little comment? It's like, ha ha, funny. It just allows you more room to interact with people or, you know, conversation starters or whatever. Um, and of course, you know, like, uh, it's very satisfying to learn things. And so you're opening up your, your mind. Um, so that's very, really cool. Um, and it's kind of like music. Like it is, a, and it's also, it's like muscle memory as well. It's almost like dancing or martial arts or music, playing music or something. There's a muscle memory involved in like making the, the movements of your face and, um, pronouncing things right and you know um and getting the flow and it's kind of quite embodied thing um so it can also be good as a kind of meditation where uh you if i'm trying to think in irish or french french is a bit faster than irish but uh Gwailga and be irish the real name francais for french but um like i can't think that quickly so there's more space around my thoughts so, so sometimes I'll do that as a sort of meditation. Like I'm forcing my mind onto this higher gear where it's just not able to go as fast. It's forced to go, go slower and there's more space, more silence, more pre presence or consciousness around it. Um, so yeah. Um, why else is it fun? You can watch movies and read books in these languages. Um, I think, yeah. So there's many reasons, but basically it's just really, uh, really cool thing and you know like watching netflix or watching movies so many of the things we do these days are very passive it's like we're losing our yeah not to be complaining too much there's i love movies i love books i love a lot of you know quote unquote passive things um but it's like uh you know it seems like there's a lot of people who maybe are missing kind of like uh the just perturbing the universe just like creating and doing things and active hobbies whether it be like martial arts or it's like painting create or music creating something or um you know uh you know learning a language and you're building up your ability to speak this thing and then you're talking you're speaking to people and sharing it and um you know it's like you're kind of um you're not just a passenger to life you're in the driver's seat um it's a very like very intimate thing because it's your you and your mind um and so yeah. And, uh, so that would kind of be the fun, I guess. Um, and, uh, yeah, it can also, yeah, just be like, uh, I guess, yeah. Okay. That's enough. So, uh, the second thing is, uh, it's quite good for your mind. Um, so, you, uh, I think they've done studies where in Ireland on average, the people who speak, who uh, learn everything through Irish in the Gwail school, um, like the you know Irish language school where it's immersion, they're learning everything, mathematics and history, everything in the Irish language. And of course, everyone speaks English as well. But like in school, they're just doing it through Irish. Like um, that, people might be like, "What's going on?" But within like six weeks or something, they're on, they're they're into it. Their mind's gone. 
we need to adapt to this and they're just doing it. Um, maybe it take longer for other people. I don't know. But that they have, uh, on average, they have better scores than people who don't do it. Um, and you could say, oh, that's socioeconomic and potentially these schools are more um, attended by people from better off families, um, although not, not always at all. A lot of people are getting interested in these schools. They're growing. Um, the Irish language is like spoken by under less than 5% of the population daily. Um, traditional speakers, I think less than 1% of the population speak it um, because of various things we don't need to get into. Another podcast I'm going to do on the Irish language. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, but you know, these schools are growing, but it seems like, you know, it makes sense that it's good for your mind. It's, um, an exercise for your brain when you, are, uh, you know, like, Oh, I want to, I'm hungry. I want to go get a, a sandwich. If you're going to ex express that in another language, you're with someone, you, uh, j'ai faim, uh, je vais, uh, aller pour prendre un uh, sandwich. Or bewildum capera, bemeig dull, aun or whatever, right? You have to like mm, the gears of your mind are turning, you know, and um, so that's triggering, you know. I guess I think, uh, you know, via neuroplasticity, triggering new neural pathways, and um, so kind of good as an activity for your your brain, um, I believe, um, and also it uh, allows you what you could call um, non-conceptual thinking. Uh, I think Michael Malice, this uh, mischievous trickster character who's very interesting, um, talked about uh, how having, you know, everyone should learn a foreign language because then a lot of the arguments we have is where we say, oh, this is racist. And then they say, no, that's not racist. This is racist. Or, you know, this is um, na natural. No, that's not natural. This is natural. And so you could have people having all these arguments and a, there's a certain amount of people, th things where people are just going to disagree. That's just the way of the world. And, you know, it's a beautiful system, really. We have different opinions and then we can, we're forced to, we can't just be killing each other. That's, you know, going to cause a lot of problems. So we're forced to kind of compete through logic and um, rhetoric to some extent, like appeal to emotion and style. But, um, and so there's some sort of way of problem solving collectively, a decentralized problem solving network people just talking about stuff. Um, but, uh, nonetheless, uh, so, um, a lot of the problems though, a lot of the disagreements seem like they could be avoided. Not all of them, but a lot of them, if we just properly defined our terms, like, what do you mean by that word? Oh, I think what you mean is something different to what I mean. Now, if you say that to some people, like, what are you talking about? This is the word. It means what it means. But words are signposts. They're not real in themselves. Like I can say, uh, ver or glass, I think, or joch, drink. I think glass is a, a glass, a squelga in Irish. Glass in English, right? Um, okay, which one is it? You know, uh, can't be all three, can it? Well, these are all just signposts, different color signposts saying, hey, look over there. You know, this thing, you can, you can, um, put liquids in it and ingest them, you know? Um, so, Basically, I think you don't need languages to, to learn a language to come to this understanding. You could do it through philosophy or just thinking about things properly, realizing like, oh, everything's like, we have these labels, but the things in themselves are not the labels. The labels are just useful practically for navigating in this universe. Um, but uh, so but language, learning language can help you with this, where you kind of understand like, okay, some I, like certain words there isn't a word for that thing. Oh, I need to use this other way. Or a phrase. There's this phrase. And, oh, actually, in the other language, I can't translate it directly. And you start going like, oh, I'm into that. You go, oh, yeah, je suis à ça. They might be, I don't know if you can say that. It doesn't sound right. <laughs> but they'll be like, uh, no, you can't say that. Like, but what do you mean? I just translated it. Like, no, we don't express it that way in our language. We say, oh, I am having, I am having the, the power of it what? I'm having the power of it. Yeah. That means like, you know, what you say is like, I'm into it. Like, it's interesting. I like it. What? what the? You know, that's just some crazy example, but that kind of thing happens. And it seems weird to us, but like, oh, there's what's actually, it's just, there's just different ways to phrase ideas. And so this can help when you're learning a language, you gain more awareness of, oh, okay, the, the way language really works. And that a lot of the, 
the way, you know, slogans or words or whatever, the meaning behind things, people can have different meanings that they take from things. And so, to, you know, you can actually find more common ground with people. Um, if you go, oh, okay, I see what you mean. Like say I was having a conversation about socialism with a colleague or two colleagues um, not too long ago. And um, at some point I kind of felt like, I think we're talking about different things. Like, um, you know, like what you're saying by socialism, I think, okay, if, if we call that socialism, then yeah, I, I agree with you. However, if we use socialism to mean this other thing, which I'm saying, and you're not, then I think I would disagree with da 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 da, da or I think this. And it's a kind of a way of building bridges and kind of helping each other understand what we're saying. So, so it's good for your mind as an exercise. It's, it hel helps you think more clearly. Um, and I think, uh, what else? How is it good for your mind? I guess uh, learning a language, you get exposed to maybe, you know, new culture, new value systems, new ways of looking at things or um, new ideas like, uh, yeah, like there's certain ways, like it's like there's something, um, I think uh, in Irish, the word for teenager, I can't remember what it is, but it's, um, I've forgotten, but uh, it's, I think it means uh, unfair. Like, it's so unfair, my life. Like that's the word for teenager. It's like unfair. You're an unfair, and so that kind of hints at a certain humor to the the language, um, or like say um, when there's like a choppy seas, like um, well, there's the whitewash like at the beach. You know, all the where the waters, you know, the waves are breaking and the waters are white and whatever. Um, I think that's what they'd say. Say like the, in Irish would be like the sea. What's it like the the fisherman's garden is. Um, covered in white flowers, <laughs> something like that. It's like, whoa, you know. So there's certain certain hints at the way things work, or like, or like the values or the perspectives of the people who created the language and have evolved it over the thousands of years. Um, or uh, I don't know, like um, in Japanese, you know, it's like I, I believe, uh, you know, you'd say there's no changes in the verb tense. I think so. It'd be like. Oh, yesterday I go to the park. Today I go to the park. Tomorrow I go to the park. Uh, in general, I go to the park. You know, um, so instead of saying I went or I I am going or I will go or whatever, so it seems very efficient and just simple and, and in a way elegant or efficient, which is seems to me to resonate with kind of the values of uh, Japanese culture. Where they're very good at being organized and just kind of keeping things elegant and simple and efficient um but uh so also so you can be ex exposed to more culture of course by learning language and to get really good at it you probably have to go live in a place or you know meet people and so yeah it's going to be good for you that way get you out of your comfort zone and your own you know echo chamber and go talk to new people see new and then the way they see things um also um it's good for you uh, because uh, learning in the same way that anything difficult, d learning anything difficult is good for you, martial arts, sport, um, whatever, where you need to deal with um, a lot of, you have to overcome your uh, resistance, you have to um, cultivate discipline to keep doing it, because basically, as we're going to talk about in a moment, um, when we wrap this up, this part about why, when we start talking about how, um, more important than intensity is consistency. So instead of, oh, okay, I'm going to study, yep, um, one hour a day, every day. Okay, well, should I do that or should I make it 15 minutes a day? Um, or 15 minutes once a week, you know? If, um, if you can only do an hour a day and then you do it for a week and then you stop it and you ignore it because you feel ashamed that you failed to follow through with your goals, that's not as useful as, Okay, 15 minutes once a week, and oh, that's easy, and I do it for a year, you know, that's better. More hours just overall, but also it's being integrated into your normal routine, your normal life. Um, and uh, so, and then what normally happens is, okay, 15, things are relative, you know, a lot of things are relative, not everything. Um, uh, yes, um, the relativity of things is not relative, otherwise... That'd be a paradox, no? Um, objective subjectivity, subjective objectivity. 
subobjectivity. So, uh, uh, so I was saying, uh, learn, uh, yeah, like, so discipline, um, consistency. Yeah. So things being, re um, kind of relative, like you get used to that. So 15 minutes once a day seems like, okay, it's just below my threshold of annoying and you can do that. But then after six months, maybe you go, actually, I might just extend it a little bit of kind of, you know, I could do it could be 30 minutes, you know, and you might just want to do it. And the feeling that triggers in you now is like, mm, it's just below annoying. It's okay. I can deal with it. But if you tried to do that at first, it would have been above annoying and you would, wouldn't have been sustainable. You would have had to stop. So it's kind of like this self-monitoring thing where just consistency, doing it, it becomes less and less of a, a big deal. It just becomes more normal. And then you extend your capacity. You expand your capacity for your limits are broadened and you can push up against those new limits carefully and um, with an eye to sustainability of your practice. And uh, so... Yeah, consistency over intensity. Um, so you can develop um, your discipline and commitment and devotion to goals, and then that can flow on into other aspects of your life, right? Other things you want to do. So it's not just for languages, like I said, but a lot of hobbies we have, they're not really demanding. Like, oh, I watch TV. It's like, oh, sounds like a tricky, a difficult hobby. How do you, how do you manage the, the, um, the anxiety and uh, embarrassment? and um, disheartenment that can come from, you know, when, you know, uh, th it gets overwhelmingly difficult, your hobby. Oh, I, I, th that doesn't really happen. I just sit in the chair and watch TV. Oh, okay. So you don't have to deal with these things. But when you deal with challenges, they make you grow. It's like going to the gym. You lift heavy stuff. It damages your muscles. And then your body fixes the muscles and overcompensates just to be safe. And that's how muscles grow. Right? That's how we get bigger. Um, and so... Or immune system, you know, you get, someone gets exposed to a bit of a, a pathogen, and then the body compensates and is ready, and now can deal with that path is stronger, able to deal with um, even a stronger pathogen of, um, in future. Um, so we, uh, with uh, our discipline, yeah, we can do it through one activity like learning jujitsu, learning uh, languages, or whatever, uh, or an instrument like oh. Um, guitar, it's difficult, I want to learn it but for the first three months or whatever you just got to do it, do it, do it, every day, 15 minutes and it's work, but then by the end of that you're like, oh, I can play these chords and I can play these three major chords, you know um, the three major chords or whatever uh, of each key, and um, that's like 90% of the songs so I can play all these songs I, I like and I just look at the lyrics and I can sing them and now it's fun I got to the point where it's fun, so now I'm over the, the hump there, you know, like it's just no longer really work. It's just play. It's fun. But that those first that first period it was work, right? And so you needed to develop your discipline and then that flows on to other things in your life. Other things like humility, you know, going like I'm not as good. I'm not perfect, you know, like oh, I messed up that word. I can't remember that word. Why can't I remember this stuff? I thought I was better than this. You get a lot of feedback from the world. You can't lie to the world when you're trying to learn a language. It's going to tell you exactly what your capacities are. Um, and you know, when you're using it, people are going to notice, um, but even on your own, you'll notice. And so you can be, like, Oh, I got a great memory. All right. Now let's try to learn a language and see, you know, is that true or not? And, um, it might be, or it might not be, but you'll find out. And then there's a humility with, um, coming up against our uh, shortcomings. And, uh, I think that's a big problem. A lot of people have, uh, um, with, uh, and we'll talk about that in a moment, um, how to deal with, you know, anxiety or embarrassment or disheartenment, um, kind of getting like, oh, you know, some of the negative emotions from um, the difficulty of learning a language. Um, well, of course, there are many positive emotions and the pride in your progress and the, um, the excitement and the, the humor and the, the, uh, the fun of just uh, using and being creative in this language, expressing yourself and kind of um, being able to scratch that itch of how do I say that? Uh, oh, yeah, that. Yeah. Or... You know, saying, um, if I, you know, you don't know a word, um, you know, asking people and finding, oh, yeah, yeah. So that's, um, it's all good for our mind by developing these many positive qualities of um, empathy. So, oh, I can understand now how people, other people learning languages, I understand their, their pain, you know. Um, so you have empathy um, and compassion, I guess. Um, uh, discipline, 
um, humility, knowing like, okay, I'm not all that in a bag of potato chips, you know, like I'm just, I've got my limits. We all have limits. Um, uh, sense of pride, you know, and self-respect because you're able to see, yeah, I'm making progress. I'm working on something difficult. So you, and then so it strengthens your character, I guess. Um, so yeah, there are many benefits like this to the mind. Um, the third thing about why to do, let's just uh, learn a language, would be about um, connecting to and embodying a culture. So a way of seeing and being in the world. Seeing, I mean, not like visually, but necessarily, but like uh, more in terms of consciousness or thinking, the way you perceive things. So, um, but basically, you know, um, we have these languages which allow us to think and there are philosophies within the language but even the language itself has certain constraints and a certain vibration or vibe to it you know people say oh spanish compared to german or you know french compared to english or russian compared to italian or whatever there's a different feeling to it um and so uh this is kind of it's an expression of the culture it comes from that culture but also it's like a container for the culture. It's the way the culture lives through the language almost completely. You've got food, okay, so maybe that's not coming through the language, but the way people talk about things, the way they discuss things, do they gossip? Do they congratulate each other? Do, um, do they like, uh, I guess it, and there'll be things like hugging each other, you know, like, oh, whatever, or the way they greet each other. Okay, so it's, so it's not all language, that stuff's, you know, culture is not totally language. But a huge amount of it is um, the words people use, the w the way they make no noises with their f voice, with their face, making these noises um, to participate in interactions with each other, uh, which are charged with certain meanings which their culture has invested them in with. And so um, it is very intricately woven with the culture, is the language. And we, with words, we can articulate and um, we can come to understand what is like what exists um, and what ought to be like what should be so you could say that's th what the universe is and then how we should act in the universe um, these are kind of the you know you could say maybe beliefs and values what do you believe is real and value what do you think is important um, and what, what do you think is better or you know um, in this situation what's the right thing to do teenager wants to relax the parents want them to work hard so they can be financially independent when they're older Who, who's right hmm i don't know yeah no one does uh so there's different cultures you know koreans would be like hey listen to us life can get messy korea had crazy problems and you know people were dying and like you know almost starving people you know um, back after the korean war um so like you need a you need to have your, your yourself in order. You know, this is important. Like, have fun and all that. But yeah, this is, yeah, your work, 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 work. But then other cultures like Australia are like, oh, no, what's the point of that? you got to enjoy yourself and, <coughs> excuse me, like uh, relaxation will pay dividends. If our kids are kind of happy and able to express themselves and enjoy their freedom, then they're going to be happy people and they're going to have a lot of enthusiasm for life and they're going to be successful. You know, there's certain views and so who knows who's right it's just like friends cultures are kind of like these collective identities um and they have a certain personality and just like your circle of friends people have different personalities different ways of doing things or thinking about things who's right who knows but together we're right you know we can figure it out together and kind of and that's kind of i think what the world does through cultures but languages have a very deep role in this and so by learning french you can connect to that culture and become part of it. And in a way, you're embodying that culture. Now, you might not be um, in line with the mainstream of the culture. You might be more of an offshoot, alternative kind of stream of the way you, what you think is important or what you think is real. But <coughs> you are, to some extent or other, yeah, um, part, uh, connecting to that energy field. And um, so that's very cool. And then usually it requires reading it's not just like I learned the language. It's like, okay, I'm learning language via I'm reading a newspaper article or I'm watching a movie or I'm talking to some French people who are talking about their weekend. All of these things, 
if you're going to learn the language, you're being, you're ingesting the, the culture, whether you embrace it or resist it or neither or whatever, you know, you're getting, you need to, it's mass cultural exposure to learn a language. Um, so, but yeah, so, uh, and say with uh, Irish, so I love English, you know, and I like, I write poetry and stories and stuff. I really love English, incredibly beautiful language. And that's the way, I, you know, I have um, apprehended so many of the, the things I think about and like the beauty of existence. And But nonetheless, um, there's a certain beauty to Irish for me because it's my ancestral language. And basically, in a nutshell, through colonialism, the British Empire, it was intentionally... Um, kind of exterminated like they intentionally tried to get rid of the language and they largely succeeded and I nothing I've got lots of English friends or whatever so not when I say they I would mean the um, the people who were in the institutions of power so you know royal family and the British imperial bureaucracy or whatever um, so and not even the people now right but necessarily but and uh, but nonetheless so it was kind of a tragic thing what happened to the language I think it's a very beautiful language. It's very beautiful. I love it. Um, and when I speak it, there's a certain feeling. And it's almost like, I wonder if like my, my DNA, because my, my parents are Irish, right? So, although I grew up in, in Australia, I was born and grew up in Australia. So I'd say I'm, I'm both Australian and Irish. But, um, but it's like very going to your roots, right? So if you've got some language of your ancestors which you're not able to speak i would encourage you to go learn a bit of it and you know let me know in the comments uh do you start feeling like your dna is being activated and you know uh uh ancestral memory banks are being um opened but it, it does it is interesting to think this is the language my ancestors were speaking for thousands of years until i guess 1850 ish is when after the famine um which disproportionately affected Irish speakers, um, people, you know, a million died, so a million souls went to the, the new world, immigrated, and a million, another million went to the next world, so that was a wrap, they went to heaven, um, but, uh, but so, you know, but let's say, whatever, my family's been speaking English for a hundred years, 150 years, you know, maybe more, depends, um, but that, this language has been used by the people who my body and brain is made out of their DNA. This is the way, you know, I'm descended from these people. They're, they live in me. The traumas, the energy, the, the capacities, the talents, these things which are passed down genetically or morphogenetically, um, epigenetically, whatever. Um, there's this sort of heritage. Um, and so by connecting with this language, it's helping me connect with that culture and connect with myself and my deeper self in that here I am, I'm Jamie, but I'm also my family in a way. Because um, if there's no my family, there's no me. So I'm, I'm part of it, and it's part of me, right? And also, my family's part of Ireland. It's family of families, you know? And so if there's no Ireland, there's no my family, you know? But so Ireland in the family, the family in Ireland, you know? Um, the, the tree and the branch and the branch in the tree simultaneously. So, or the one and the old, the old and the one. And so for me, I'd say that's like a, 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 one example of connecting to culture where... Um, I'm kind of embodying um, and connecting to my roots um, and thinking like, oh, this word, that's a really beautiful way of phrasing that. Oh, interesting. And just the feeling of that word, the way it sounds, the way, it, like music, the inexplicable emotional charge that it has for you. Like, oh, wow, I really like that. Um, and you're going, oh, wow, like that's the way, you know, my family were talking for and thinking for a long time. And so... That's one journey of cultural connection you can have through learning a language. Um, or, you know, like, like Japanese culture is very fascinating for me, you know. So, uh, you know, like, and like just speaking the language a little bit, you get like, you know, I know very, very little, but you're like, Naruhodo, aha, arigato gozmashita, whatever. Like, uh, oh, thank you very much, or whatever. Just like the, you get a feeling of the vibe of it, I, I think, you know. And um, it's, yeah, uh, what else can I say? Watashi wa Dublin de gogaku gaku no sensei desu. I'm an English teacher living in Dublin. Um, but like, uh, 
yeah, like te- to get into it, you temporarily disappear from your normal identity and you go into this, you know, analog version of yourself in that language. And um, by learning a language, you really are kind of opening up a whole new um, personality, kind of, you know, like or another side of your personality. So when I speak French, I, I feel like I actually, and it's a very common thing people say, but I am different. Like I am Jamie, but it's Jamie's soul for sure. But um, it's not quite, I'm not, it's not quite the same as me, like when I'm speaking English and Irish would be the same thing, you know, and it's, so it's interesting. Um, but uh, so you can connect to other cultures and get to know them, you know, or whatever. Um, so if you're interested in certain history, you know, you're learning that uh, language and then you can read directly the books are directly in that language and get a much deeper, you know, experience or like, you know, like people learning English and they can watch Monty Python's in English. Like try putting that into any other language and having it work, you know, it's not going to quite be the same, is it? Um, so that'll be the third thing there. I'd say just fun, but then also good for your mind. Um, and also, uh, yeah, it can be a, a very deep way of connecting to and in, incarnating um, at, as an avatar of a culture and letting it flow through you, which is a very cool thing, kind of becoming one with these flows of tradition that have come from long, long, long ago via, and they are, the language is the vessel for it, but it's also, the language also is it. It's like an expression of it as well. It's almost like a jug made of water or something, you know? It's like very kind of paradoxical, like, um, <coughs> yeah, apologies for these coughs, ladies and gentlemen, but, uh, uh, yeah, who knows, maybe my, my throat's going on strike, like, you should have slept more than three hours, you bollocks, but yeah, oh well. So, um, now, that's the why, more or less, of languages, let's look at the how, so, um, Okay, practice, 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 basically, just practice all the time, or, and consistency is more important than intensity, so every day is a good idea, but um, it could be 15 minutes, that's fine, um, a good thing you can do is, uh, you could, well, you could do things like Duolingo, where you get a little taste for a language, it gives you a little, it's like a little free app, you know, and you can, uh, application, right, and, uh, you know, you can learn stuff and get, I started Irish with that and um, maybe French. I did a little bit, but I studied French at university for a year. That's where I basically, and then living in Montreal, I got um, French basically through that. Um, but uh, yeah, Irish, I started on Duolingo for a bit and, you know, it, it's not the best, but it's a good starting spot. It can get, give you, it's very useful, very easy to use. Um, you can get vocabulary, you get a little bit of grammar and just the, the you know, you can, start saying the words and just feeling the sound of it and um so and understanding the connection between like the phonetic uh the phonics the connection between the the symbols and the the sounds um so but then um some you know in general you you could go to a school of course and study but in terms of um and that's good i recommend for english i mean the callan method if anyone's watching uh, um who wants to learn english i don't know um or is learning English, um, maybe former students. Hello, former students, if anyone's watching, my friends. Um, Callan method, very, very effective. I've been teaching with that for a, partly, that's part of the teaching I'm doing for like the last few years. And it's like just vocabulary, largely vocabulary based, um, but, and there's grammar there too, but that's um, very interesting. So that's a, there's different methods of learning or in general, it should be communicative, you know, somewhere where you're being, you're, um, you're using the language to talk to people, communicating. Um, you, either you're writing or you're in reading or speaking or listening, but it's about transfer of information, which is what a language is meant to be. And so you're really using it. You know, It's not just study the grammar. It's not really enough. That said, it's good to know the grammar, good to study grammar. I'd say vocabulary is probably more important. If you have the words, you can just string them together in kind of ridiculous grammatical forms and people should understand you. To, you know, enough. That's better than being like, oh, I have the grammar, but oh, I don't have the words. That's m- more of a problem. Better to have like, you know, kind of alphabet soup of, uh, but you, you've got all the words there, and then, you know, jumbled, you know. So just vocabulary is a big thing. 
So you, there's some, you could do flashcards, you know, where you have like these cards and, you know, one side says the word in your native language, the other side has it in the language you want to learn. Um, or you can, there's a thing called Anki, A-N-K-I. Um, it's, you can have it on your computer or on your phone and it's basically electronic flashcards. And so that's very, you could have the sound where you can hear the, the, the way to pronounce the word and you read it. And then, um, you know, you go, what does it mean? Uh, I think it means this. And then you click and you see the other side. Are you right or wrong? So you can learn, you know, and if it's like, oh, it's really difficult. There's like a difficult, it's going to repeat soon. You'll get that card again soon. If it's really easy, you click easy and it'll show you it much later. So, you you know, it goes in a, a more distant orbit. So that's really useful. I've used that a bit. I want to use it more for Irish. But um, you can also uh, uh, do, yeah, well, getting vocabulary through um, reading. One of the best things for learning a language, if you've already got a basic level in it, would be reading. So you can get like a book, right? It has perfect grammar and vocabulary and punctuation and spelling. So there's so much information encoded there. And so you can see, you can read, read, read. Oh, I don't know what that word means. But it's like, oh, Jenny was, um, Jenny, Jenny was livid when she realized, you know, Paul had eaten her sandwich. She stormed out of the room and smashed a bottle. Okay, livid. I don't know what livid means, but she smashed a bottle. She kind of went out of the room, stormed. Storm is kind of like crazy weather. Hmm, okay. I would guess livid means unhappy, like angry or sad maybe. Okay, and then you, you, know, you go on. You don't even need to look it up. You could look it up if you want, you know, or you could, you could look it up at, in the moment, but then you lose your flow to some extent if you're doing that too much. Probably not the best idea, to, unless it's necessary to understand the paragraph. Otherwise, you could just write it down if you want, and then say at the end of the day or at the end of the week, you look at all your words and you spend a few minutes, fifteen minutes, going through them, looking up the meanings. You go, oh, okay, I get it, I get it, you know. And you could write if you're doing that, you might write, oh, page twenty-eight, this word, or P twenty-eight, um, P, uh, P four. Page 28, paragraph 4, and you write the word. And so you can find it after and look at the context. Look at the meaning on, from the internet or a dictionary and then go in the context. Oh, I see what it means now. I see how it fits in. Um, or you don't even need to do any of that. Um, you could just read, 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 and say livid. You see the word livid. Okay, I think probably it means like angry or sad or something based on the context. It's all about context, you know, um, learning language. Um and then, you know, maybe two months later, you're reading uh, another thing and it says, you know, the word livid in another context where it's like, oh, you know, um, the general um, was absolutely livid um, with his uh, soldiers when they um, ran away from the battle and he, um, he was so angry, he blah, blah, blah. So it's, like, oh, okay, it's very clear, livid means angry. Okay. So before, so I'm narrowing down. I thought, oh, I must be upset. I could be angry, could be sad, um, but emotionally unstable, destabilized. But now, oh, okay, another instance of it. It's it's like sculpting away the stone. You know, you're getting closer to the shape of things. Without a teacher, now you know the livid, what it means. You might say livid, and you might not realize how to pronounce it, but that happens, you know, that's fine. But at least you're using the words. You use it, someone corrects you. Oh, yeah, livid, yeah. Livid, yeah, right, right, right. I hadn't heard it said before, uh-huh. Oh, how do you know the word? You haven't heard it said before? Oh, good job. You know, you must be reading. Good for you. Um, so um, also grammar, like, oh, why is it structured that way? I would have said it this way. Hmm, can I do it my way as well? Hmm, interesting. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye out for that. And then you keep reading, da 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 And you, it's been, you keep reading every day, you know, whatever reading, and then, after a week, I, I still I've n I've not seen the structure that I use when I talk. I keep seeing this structure used instead. So then you might kind of go, oh, I think I'm doing it wrong. And then you might keep that. Go, okay. Next time you're talking to someone, you might say, hey, can I say this? Is that possible? And they go, oh no, no. Ah, right. Or they go, yes, but only in this situation. It's very rare. It means this. Ah, oh, okay. It's different. That's not what I thought I meant. Okay. So reading can make you aware of these things because you, you you can see examples of, well, in this situation, they use this verb tense. In this situation, they use that verb tense. So you get many, 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 many examples. And then just naturally, your brain will, you know, 
do dot to dot kind of fig, um, you know, figure out the shapes of things um, without a teacher, you know. Um, and so, and also, you know, vocabulary, punctuation, the way we use commas and apostrophes and, you know, da hyphens, dashes, and that kind of thing, um, or spelling, you know, the spelling of words. And so, a big problem with la learning language is just a pure quantity of exposure. You need a huge amount of exposure to really get, you know, fluent. Um, but um, a great way to do that is through reading because you get so much vocabulary, grammar, all this stuff. And also, in a, if it's a movie or a TV show, it's, it passes and you have to rewind if you want to rewatch it or whatever. Or in a conversation, it's just gone. You know, oh, what was that thing? Oh, I can't. But a book, you can see it and you can just stop and look at it, you know. Um, so a book, books are very useful for, I think, expanding your, um, your, link, your language abilities, you know. Um, and to make it easy, make it e as easy as possible for yourself. So find something you want to read. You're interested in reading. If you're into romance novels, read romance novels in the, the language you want. And often there are graded readers where it's like they will simplify. They take pride and prejudice and they simplify it so that people at a lower level of English can read it. So, you know, the, um, you can do that or you could read kids' books. Um, no shame in that. It's pretty cool if you can read kids' books in another language, you know, like that's pretty good. Um, and everyone starts there at some point, you know. So you've got to have that humility and go, okay, this is where I am. This is what I need to learn. Um, or uh, even, yeah, whatever more complicated stuff, but maybe you don't understand everything, but you get enough of the, it where I'm getting the gist. I'm understanding like half of this. So I can go through and there's all this stuff I don't understand, but there's a thread. I can see a story developing, a narrative, and that's pretty crazy. I can, in another language, I can ha un have that awareness of, oh, she's angry at him because of this. He's not telling her about some other thing that's happening. It's happening because of this. That could be very simplified and you're missing a bunch of details. Some things might even be wrong, but who cares? You've got a story. You're having fun. You know, you're, we love stories. And so that's one thing. Or maybe you're interested in science. And so it could be nonfiction stuff in it or, you know, um, whatever it is, like uh, th crime novels. Um, but reading something that you want to read, that'll make it a lot better because, you know, there's, it's, of course, more difficult to read. It's a certain it's taxing for your brain in, a, in another language. So another good thing you can do is, um, so yeah, that's good for vocabulary, reading. Also movies and stuff, great. But, you know, I'd say it's better for listening, really. And one thing you can do, if there's a movie you love watching, you can watch it a dozen times or a TV show or whatever, um, uh, or a scene in a movie or whatever. You can watch it f first with subtitles. So you understand your, in your language, subtitles, you understand what's happening. And then watch it again with no subtitles. And you can just now listen. Because if, if, you, if you try to listen with subtitles, your mind will just go Oop, straight to the words usually. It's like the easy way. But then you're not really listening. You're reading. Different skill. So important, but it's a different skill. So to get the re listening, which is very important, because speaking and listening are the more primary than reading and writing. We were speaking and listening for a long, long, long time before reading and writing uh, was invented, existed. Um, so, um, but yeah, you can watch it once with the subtitles and then watch it again with no subtitles. And you already understand what's been happening in the scene. So then now you can just hear these sounds from the, the way they're speaking the language. You go, ah, oh, that's the way they're using the language and that as these situations are flowing into one another. Cool, interesting, you know. Um, you can shadow them, right? You can copy what they're saying, you know, um, and as a way of helping yourself remember it. It's like muscle memory, you know. If you want to learn something, like say it. Someone says something. Oh, no, you should say, uh, um, Lanarai, like go ahead. Okay, cool. Lanarai, Lanarai, Lanarai. Just saying it, you know, that will massively increase the chances of you retaining that and being able to use it again in the future. Um, so what else? Yeah, um, people often say, oh, but I don't have anyone to practice with. I don't have anyone to talk to. A lot of Irish people say this with the language, like saying, oh, there's just no one to talk to, you know. But y there's you, there's yourself. So go, you know, uh, Lauren uh, Lesh to Fane. Uh, something like that, <laughs> Beta, <laughs> maybe. So speak to yourself. <clears throat> You're speaking to yourself in your own language all the time anyway. We're thinking self-talk, you know, the ego. Oh, what do I want to do? Mm, I'm a bit hungry. Uh, I, I eat too much. I shouldn't do that. Hey, what are you talking about? I don't eat enough. You know, I, I'm, I've been working hard here. I deserve some, you know, nice cake, whatever. Oh, yeah, I guess we could do that. Um, you know, like we have these internal dialogues and stuff like this, right? Um, 
why not do that in the other language? Um, also, will probably help you get control of your mind, which is good for your happiness, etc., and mindfulness. But uh, you can start talking out loud, and then start doing in your head once it's you've got the flow of it enough. But um, say, all right, we go, um, Anish, Kodawalam Ajanov, um, Bader, Bechordam. Emirate guitar, I think, I think Emirate is the wrong verb, but, oh, what am I, mm, what would I like to do right now? Um, maybe I should play guitar, you know, like these things just in the moment are flowing or you go, oh, I want some coffee. I'm going to do that. And anytime you hit a dead end where uh, uh, you can't quite express yourself, just go st straight revert into your native language for a bit, into, but only as long as you need to, and then go back to the language you're trying to practice and learn. And by doing that on your own, you're starting to think in the language. Talking to yourself, that will turn into thinking to yourself. And so you won't be translating from your native language anymore, which takes a lot of time. Um, and, you know, you're trying to, uh, someone says something and you're like, oh, yeah, and by the time you've understood it and you're forming your response, even just thinking of what you think, sometimes that takes a while. But even if you had an immediate, oh, yeah, I know what I want to say in Italian, and then you're trying to say it in English, like, um, afterwards. oh, yeah, and you start to say it and they're moving on to another topic already. Like, ah. So you can, you're not participating in the conversation. You can get annoyed or frustrated. You're missing out, right? But so thinking directly in English or in the language you're trying to learn, you know, that's something that can happen and you can do that. That's what you need to do, but you can do it, help the process along by talking to yourself. Um, and so that's one thing. Uh, also, you know, using it, if you're in a place where you can use it, use, every, use it any way you can. So I'm in Ireland and people don't even speak Irish here. Most people, you know, but I'm always, you know, I'll say thanks to people and stuff. But all the time I'm also saying like, you know, oh, thank you. You know, thank you very much, my friend. You know, and um, whether to Irish people and a bunch of them often are like, uh, <laughs> bemused, like what's going on? Um, or, or they were like, oh, you're welcome. Cool. You know, it's a nice little thing. But you know, it's great connecting with people. I love that and helping the language, you know, kind of flourish to some extent, doing my little part. That's really fun and satisfying. But um, also, mostly it's just for me. I want to use the language. And so I'll be damned if I'll let anyone stop me, you know? Like, you know, it's... Uh, or if you're in somewhere where, you know, um, you go to the Netherlands or something and you're trying to speak Dutch and they're famed for... They'll go, oh, you're, you're an English speaker. And they'll talk back to you in English because they want to practice their English, because they're very, in general, they're very good at English. Um, uh, uh, I don't know, very good at English. Um, but they do that. Okay, you just stick to your guns and go, they can talk to you in English and you can talk to them in Dutch. That's totally fine, yeah? You go, oh yeah, and just keep saying what you're trying to say um, in your language, you know, and that you're trying to practice. And uh, so you, you're at the, uh, getting, getting a coffee, you know, think... Um, when I was doing speaking French in Montreal for a while, I was a bit um, anxious or like self-conscious of like, oh, am I making mistakes or, you know, it's like trying to, what should I say, you know. Um, but then pretty quickly I kind of got to this point of like just laughing at myself, which is I kind of realized that it's like if I'm already laughing, like I'll just say like, like, um, like, c'est quoi le mot pour ça? Ah, Christ, Mon cerveau marche pas. Like, what's the word for that? Oh, Christ, my, my brain doesn't work. You know, I'll, I'll just be kind of like laughing or just kind of in a, having fun, just like, you know, just kind of like laughing at myself. And I realize if I'm already laughing at myself, um, they can't laugh at me. They can only laugh with me. So there's this subtle thing of people, you're already, that, that feeling of, oh, I'm separated from people by some, you know, anxiety or some shameful thing which I have to hide and, you know, that doesn't happen. If you're already kind of like um, not taking yourself seriously, then worst case scenario, if there, you do meet people who do that, it doesn't matter You're because you've already gotten there first. There's nothing, nowhere to fall. You're already, you know, you've got your feet in the ground. Um, and, but then um, probably what happens is they find it kind of charming. They like people who are confident and people having a good time. And so they were like, oh, no, you you speak well or, or like, haha, yeah, yeah, yeah. How long have you been learning? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And so for me, that works as a good attitude for trying to do, you know, um, learn languages. Uh, having a kind of lighthearted attitude of, 
I'm happy to laugh at myself. I'm not pretending I'm perfect at this thing. And um, letting it be on your own terms of like, I know I'm not perfect, but I, um, I want to practice it. I want to learn it. And that means I need to practice it. And so that means I need to, and mistakes are teachers. You know, if you make no mistakes, it probably means you're not practicing enough. Because naturally, if you're practicing enough, you're going to make a, um, a minority of what you say is going to be a mistake. Um, like, but, you know, probably a significant minority will be mistakes. And then that's an opportunity for you to notice it or for someone else to notice it and tell you. Or maybe look at you a bit funny and you go, hmm, I think maybe I can't say what I just said. Or, and you might even go a step further and ask them, like, is that possible to say that or should I? And I just recruit people into, you know, telling me, you know, like I'm at a cafe speaking French to someone, be like, um, say something and you go, blah, 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 just, you know, explore using the language. Oh, yeah, it's nice, you know. And even if, you know, it's not like things very deep that you really care about, but you're just using the language, you're just having a flow, you know, you're getting, there's a vibe. And then you might notice uh, you try to say something, you oh, and you come up against a, a wall or an obstacle. You're like, you're like, I don't know how to say that. And then you can ask them, ah, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Like, um, blah, is that? By the way, or is that by chance? Hmm. Whatever. Um, be uh, like, uh, by the way, how do you say this? Uh, and they would, you know, they're just working, but uh, blah, blah, blah. They will usually just tell you. So you can re recruit people into being your teachers. Um, and often people will like that. Uh, they'll like people learning their language usually, you know, not always. But um, yeah, so you can do this and... Um, um, that would be very good because you're getting real-world experience with the language. Um, now, so some people with some problems, like so that's the, the gist of getting out of your own way. Is like, don't take it too seriously. Just practice and enjoy it. And, you know, say you have the right to speak your own language you want to speak, you know, with, within reason. Like, I'm not going to speak Italian to, like, some Greek guy. I'm like, hey, why don't you understand me? But if I could speak Italian. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Um, it, even if, if someone judges you because, oh, your English isn't perfect or whatever the language is, um, the fact that they're judging you for that means you shouldn't be paying attention to their opinion. That's just disqualified them from someone whose opinion is worth thinking about because that's the whole reason you're upset with that is because it's unreasonable. They shouldn't be doing that to you, right? You might say, no, it's because of my status. I've been diminished in status. But not really. Um, I think... Yeah, in a way. But um, the real problem with it is that um, if people are doing what it irks you, it's like that they, they shouldn't be doing that. Because the truth is, you know, you're, pra you're trying to move up the hierarchy of the language, increase your level, and so you need to practice. And if someone's going to try to um, prevent, you know, make you feel bad about practicing, then that just shows their ignorance. And so therefore, you can just safely ignore anyone who's going to be like laughing at you about your language skills um, or lack thereof. And so, yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, so even, um, there's nothing to lose really. And so you just practice it and get, um, do whatever, you know, makes you feel happy to practice it. And it's all about enjoying it. And it's not, it's not like, oh, when am I going to be at this level? It's like, today is another day where I am living this language and I get to use it. That's a beautiful thing. And it's just an end in itself. You're just living the language. It's part of you, you know? And when you can be happy, like, and enjoying it just like that, then the consistency is easy and you, you, you know, you'll have this dense consistency like custard, you know, um, you'll, you'll be doing, practicing it all the time and you'll get better. Someday you'll wake up and go, oh, my Irish is much better, you know, or whatever it is, you know, um, and, uh, you know, so, um, embarrassment, no need for that, right? You laugh, just have fun, be lighthearted. And anyone who's actually going to, the minority of people who would be, you know, give you some, give you some sass about it. Like, you know, if it's joking, it's coming like from a good place. Okay, cool. Whatever. Take the joke, you know? Great. Um, if it's coming from a malicious place, then cool. They just disqualify themselves from the list of people whose opinion you need to think about. Um, uh, and it's actually your obligation now to ignore what they're thinking because, you know, uh, to be your best self, which the world needs and wants you to be your best self, you know? Um, so, that's embarrassment um, and anxiety, right? Uh, uh, dis discouragement or being disheartened. I'd say, you know, um, it's good to have goals and try to work towards them. But um, there's a balance between that, the strictness of 
working for go- toward goals. And some people are a bit too lax, a bit too lazy maybe, or relaxed and they, you know, don't push themselves enough and um, then you might not develop as quickly. But then on the other hand, you can be too intense where, you know, you're struggling and it's not really enjoyable. So it's just like a bicycle. You don't want it to be on too lower gear or you're, you're not really, you're pedaling and you're not really making the most of your energy. <clears throat> or on too higher gear, you're barely able to move and you're like putting in all this energy and yet the bicycle is only moving a small distance forward per unit of energy. If you find the right gear for you, that goes for being in the right class at a school, not too high, not too low, and the right amount of um, frequency and um, uh, of you know your study sessions and the length of those sessions and the way you do it, whatever, in all these things, finding the balance where it's the right gear on the bicycle where you're able to go as f- op- um, optimize your speed with energy per unit of energy. And so, yeah, okay, I'm able to go, I can maintain this pace and I'm going as fast as I can. I'm making as much progress as possible because I'm finding the sweet spot. And if it's too difficult, it triggers anxiety. If it's too easy, it triggers boredom. So when you're learning something, you want to be in that sweet spot in the middle. <coughs> My apologies, yeah. Come on, let's go. Um, uh, how do you say it? Uh, excuse me. Uh, excuse moi. Are oh, we? Oui. En français. Um, so, yeah, also it's kind of interesting. You can flow between languages. Like, you know, like I really enjoy just going between different languages, like when you're speaking. Ve da hangach. Etre bilingue. To be bilingual. Or whatever it is. Trilingual. Ish. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's a fun thing. And, uh, like say in Montreal, I was very inspired by this in Montreal. Um, the people just go between French and English in like the middle of the sentence. And it seems like almost like lightning with the way lightning zigzags down to the ground. It's just due to moisture, et cetera, in the air. It's wherever is the past of, le- of path of least resistance. It's easiest for that energy to ground itself into the earth. That's the path it goes just like, a, you know, a bowl rolling down a hill or whatever. Um, and so, you know, they'll be like, ah, oh, I was, you know, on the bus and I saw someone who said it's just uh, absolutely bizarre. It's just come like, what are you doing? Why are you here? C'est trop drôle, you know? And so they're not really, I don't think they're totally aware what they're doing, but they're just kind of, they're expressing their idea and whatever um, kind of feels right. And so it's interesting that the mind can kind of jump between the languages to capture the idea efficiently or kind of comprehensively or just with a certain feeling, you know? So that's a cool thing. You've got more... When, you're, when you've got more languages, um, you can kind of express yourself more clearly. Um, if you're with people who speak those languages, of course. But, and that's another cool thing, community. You can make, make join a community of people who are speaking this. It's a great thing. Um, um, so back to uh, how. Okay, so we're talking about the, you know reading and movies and things, um, flashcards, Anki, um, uh, th- talking to yourself and thinking to yourself, using it out in the world at grocery stores, um, uh, you know, cafes, whatever you're doing. Um, now, Google Translate can be very useful, but you need to be careful. If you just pop something into Google Translate, it's probably going to be wrong, like a lot of the time. Because, you know, if you say, um, uh, I, um, I don't, there's many words where it has double meanings, like ring. You might say, oh, I need to ring her later. And then if you translate that into something else, it in in English, the word ring can be used for calling someone or for a, a circular thing you put on your finger, right? And so, but in, in the other language, they might be two different words, you know? They might have like Tom Glock and Bizagong. And you're like, and then Google Translate gives you Tom Glock, whereas you actually needed Bizagong. But Google Translate doesn't know which, you know, version of the word you meant. So um, sometimes there's enough context where it knows, but often it, it's not sophisticated enough. It doesn't, can't figure out which thing you meant. So a good thing to do is to go in small chunks. So you can, I've learned a lot through Google Translate where I go, um, and especially once you've got the phonics of the, like the language pretty well figured out. So um, you can kind of tell more or less how to pronounce the words when you see them. Um, from there, you can, you know, you put, oh, how do I say that? You're talking to someone, um, how do you say that? And if there's a moment, you might just type it into Google Translate on your phone and see just the word and it changes it. And, um, and you go, okay, this, you could say that to them. And then they go, yeah, yeah, exactly. Or maybe they go, oh, no, no, not quite that. And, but either way, you're kind of learning something. You might say, no, that you use that in a different context. Or even, and to check things, say on your own, you can 
go get a word and then you um, say, so, okay, I get the word in Irish for some English word that I, I wanted to translate. Then I'll flip it, copy that and flip it and put it into translate and see that Irish word, what does it turn into in English? And it might turn into a different um, meaning, like say ring, you know, maybe I'm looking for ring like to call someone. Like, okay, ring, and it gives me this Irish word. Then I f copy that, flip the th translate, so I put it into Irish first, and it comes up with a uh, circle. Ah, uh, no. So it's like, okay, it's translating circle or ring, not phoning someone. Okay, so then maybe I type in um, phone or um, ring up and see, oh, yeah, it gives me a different word in Irish. Okay, copy that, flip the thing, put it in, and it goes phone, call. I go, okay, that's the word I was looking for. So there's ways to test it um, or, and, uh, you know, grammar, you go, okay, looking, trying to figure out the structures of things. It's all about reverse engineering things. So you put something into Google, all right, And it goes like, okay, like I am talking. It's like, um, Tommy egg kinch. You go, okay. Hmm. All right. And then, w then you go, okay, well, what if, uh, I change a little, just to figure out what's happening. You're like, okay, instead of I, I'll go, um, he is talking and then it's, Ta she egg kainch. Ah, okay. She must mean he. Because I just changed, you know, or, or is it the, the verb be? Hmm. You know, and you can figure out <coughs> by modifying little things one by one, like a little scientist, modifying, controlling the variables, you can figure out like what means what. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically in a nutshell, that's what you can do with Google Translate. Then, um, and uh, a great thing, if you're writing an email to someone or you're you know, sending a text message and you're using the language, which is a fun thing to do, I like to do that. Um, if I don't know how to say something, I will, um, if I think I know how to say it, I'll type it out and then I'll double check it on Google Translate or, or whatever um, to see. And I might notice my spelling was wrong and then I read it and then I go to the text. I never copy and paste, but I read it and then go into the text and change it. And you might find... You, you go, wait a minute, I can't quite remember. Is that right? Okay, so you've done it, and then you go back to Google, and you go, okay, yeah, I had it right, good, send. Or you go, oh, no, I had one letter wrong, okay. So by doing that, by forcing yourself to, you're cheating, quote-unquote, it's cheating because you're using the translate thing, but then you're not just copying and pasting it. You're using your own memory to write it. That's integrating into your own memory. So you're, it's harder, and so you're going to remember it, if, you know, more likely to remember it. Um, and you can do that with big things, you know. You can take a, a big... I'm trying to say this thing. I have no idea how to say it at all. Take, go to Google, translate. Okay, try to figure out, be, make sure, you know, by changing small little things that, okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is, this means this. That's what it means, what I'm, I th I'm trying to say. And then instead of just copying and pasting it, you know, you go to your message and you write it. You start writing it. And then when you can't remember anymore, you go back to Google, check, look at it. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, got it. And then, okay, leave it. Go back to the writing and try and put it in. By doing this, you are integrating these words, and you might, you know, if you might think, but it's it's inauthentic. I'm cheating. It's not my words. It they are your words now. You know, this is how you learn. You're in integrating new um, vocabulary, and so it's a great thing. You're learning the language. Um, what else? So it's another way to learn. Um, let's see. Of course, you can. You know, so it's all just exposure. You can listen to the radio. You know, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, but getting friends you can talk to. There's um, things, uh, sites like Meetup, or Meetups, is it? Where you can, you know, oh, who wants to have an early morning football game in this place, you know? There's people who want to do it, and you can see what groups are in your city. So you could do that to see if there's language groups practicing what you want to speak. Um, I, uh, you know, I learn a lot from, you know, uh, Irish language groups where I'm, like, meeting people, whether it's online, you read it alone, or if it's in person, like, you know, uh, a rare like last night. Um, uh, so um, when you're speaking with people, for one thing, you know, you're getting that kind of the good buzz of your connection with people. And it's fun. You can get feedback on how well you're improving, whatever. Um, and uh, you get new vocabulary from people. They say things you're like, wait, what do they, what do they mean there? And from the context, you can kind of figure things out a bit. Or maybe it's only, you know, three weeks later, someone says the thing again, but because you had that almost got it before now you go oh i get it so you can eventually get enough exposure where you understand the words and it's almost like words are like um little planets in, on orbits you know the word the or something is so common it's on a very frequent orbit around you know you could just say the orbit right it recurs a lot in conversation 
But then the certain phrases which are less commonly used, maybe like um, all in all or something, that's used. We use that a lot, but we don't use it all the time. You might go many days without saying all in all. Um, but then something like, um, um, uh, I don't know, yeah, yeah, the other phrases uh, which are more common, um, given that or um, because of or um, good morning or whatever, you know, there's things you say all the time. And so they're almost like this closer orbits. They, they're um, recurring more. And so what happens is in, in a conversation, you see someone's talking, they say something, like, what is that? What is that mysterious mercurial energy form of sound and vibration and meaning that just occurred. Hmm, okay. Then you, if you're still talking, 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 often it'll recur again later and it's that context thing from like reading, same thing. You can start to figure out what it is. And so that's really cool. And of course, the things which are harder to figure out that way, like or they recur less often, they're less important anyway. So it's fine. The more important things, they recur very frequently. That's why they're more important. And so you've, it's easier to learn them. Um, but uh, what else? So um, learning a language. Uh, yeah, gram there's a place for grammar, you know, looking things up, studying online. YouTube videos, you can find people explaining stuff. That's good. Um, and but I think basically it's just using it and cultivating your own sense of happiness about using it. Um, and... Uh, yeah, developing that side of yourself. Like this isn't just something that I'm doing just – even if it's for work or something um, and you need to learn the language, um, I would say it's uh, – you know, you should treat it like um, you're developing a side of yourself. You know, you're, you're exploring your own personality through this thing. Um, and, uh, yeah, then, then you can be very motivating because you're – you know, you want to be your best self or – you know, um, I suppose. But uh, so let's see, is there anything missing here? Um, it's been through some ways of how to do it. I mean, writing, writing a journal can be very good. And then after that, you can go through again and look at errors after you've written it, if you want, or show it to a friend, someone who can, you know, you and a friend do that and share stuff and let the correct each other, talk about any where you don't agree. You know, I don't think that's wrong. Really? I think it's wrong because you could figure, do that together. Um, you can send letters and emails and texts to other people of kind of pen pals who also want to learn language. Um, shout out to Chador uh, in British Columbia, who's probably not listening. I um, don't know if he's even aware that this podcast exists. But um, I have a friend who um, we kind of write letters in Irish uh, occasionally. It's been a, a while. I need a... Bechor them... Faust... Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, so <laughs> I tried to say, um, I need to send a letter, but I got stuck on, I need to, sp uh, whatever. I don't, I don't understand. No, not understand. Uh, I don't know how to say that. Okay, so there's an example of like a little train wreck of like a sentence, but you're using the language and you can even use the language to say, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know how to say that. So even, even so you're using the language, you know, like, um, Try something. Okay. Tactical retreat. Does There's a dead end. So, okay, I have to reverse and go around, find find another path. Um, and if you can't describe, explain something, or if you're trying to explain something and people don't understand, what you can do is try and express it another way. Try to say it clearer with better pronunciation, louder maybe. If they still don't understand you, don't just keep hammering at that door. Find another way around. Try to rephrase it because um, there's something going on. Either they don't have their vocabulary or you're making a mistake. Um, but... Uh, so, so I'm going to say uh, some, another interesting point there about learning. Um, well, okay, so yes, yeah, so there's that, the phonetics, and um, okay, we'll talk about that first. So when I hear things, what I like to do is I write it down in my phone so I don't forget it, and what I'll do is I'll say, if I know how to spell it, I'll write it down, spell it first, and then I go um, brackets, and um, in brackets, I put two things. I put the, the sound of it. And so I just use my own little creation of like ways to express the sounds. So it's completely unambiguous. It's totally clear. This is, it can only mean one thing. Um, so if it's, um, 
Like, I am wonderful. I'm like, Konstatatu, how are you? Ah, oh, Tamiga Hintich. I'm well. I'm, I'm wonderful. I'd say ta. So I go, okay, I'll write T, ta. I could go T A W, like tor, or maybe T A ta. But, but maybe I, when I see that in the future, I might go ta, 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 tor. Hmm, it's not very clear. So I'll try to make it specific so there's only one way to see it. I'll go ta. Okay, the closest for me, I think, is T A W, tor. I'll use that. Someone else might not understand it, but it's just for me. It doesn't matter. It's just for me and myself. So, tor, okay. And then, may. Okay, M A Y. I'm not going to be like, Maya? No. I'm going to read that and go, may. I'm going to know exactly what to say. Okay, perfect. So, may, gama. G. G E. That could be ge or gi. Mm, so, let's say, uh, G U H or H. Ga. That sounds pretty close. Tome ga. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it's close enough to where I'm going to be able to say something pretty close to the actual thing. And then ma. Okay, ma, m, m u h, maybe. Could do m, r, m, a, but I might think that's like ma or ma. Okay, keep. So something that's um, unambiguous for you. And um, just use letters in the way that from sounds you're familiar with in your own language, where you'll be able to do something similar. Or like teşe kurler in like um, t uh, Turkish, like thank you. You know, like te, you know, t e h hyphen shake. Like, sh like shake, shake, shake a bottle, you know, write that, S-H-A-K-E, um, kur, leer, kur, might go C-O-O-R, kur, kur, it's a bit different, kur, instead of kur, but that's close enough, that's the closest I can think of to write it, and then leer, um, the r thing, I don't know how to write it, but I'll go leer, L-A-I-R, like, oh, the leer, the dragon's leer, teshe kur leer, that's pretty close, teshe kur leer, you know, cool, so, Good enough. And then semicolon, and then I'll write what it means. Like, thank you. Or, Tomega Hintik, right? Da, 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 and then go, um, write, you know, the phonetics kind of thing for me. And then semicolon, and I am very well. You know, or I am wonderful. Close brackets. Um, or, and, uh, or if you don't know how to spell it, like Turkish or something, I have no idea how to spell these things. You can just have the, the, the sound, and then semicolon, or whatever, or equal sign, whatever works for you. And then um, the meaning. And so in, when you forget it, oh, you forget stuff, right? It's very easy to forget things. And you, you can pull out your phone and read it. And go, duh, 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 duh. oh, yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. And you go, okay, say it a few times. And then you're at the cafe with the Turkish fella, and you go, oh, teşe kur ler. And he's like, ah, cool. You're making him happy. You're feeling happy. You're using the language, using your brain, right? So um, now, so that's keeping notes in, um, and so that you can say things. Ah, oh, yes, thank you, Lord. All right, remember, very important. The things to focus on when you're learning, right, is um, vital, very, very useful things. Is You want to learn, you don't need to learn every word. You want to learn the most common words. So in any language, I think it's like um, uh, the top, the most, um, the 100 most common words, they represent like 80% of the um, conversation, something huge like that. Like 80% of all the things you say are just like 100 words rearranged. Or maybe like a thousand words. That's like eighty percent of everything, and then maybe the top ten thousand words. So an extra nine thousand below that. That brings you up to like say maybe ninety-five percent, and then there's maybe another fifty thousand words which are very rare, and that'd be like five percent of all conversation. But you can get like eighty percent of all the words, the vocabulary, just by focusing on the top. Go on the internet, look up one hundred most used words in this language, or one thousand top one thousand most used. And once you've got them, then you'll be able to, you have the building blocks to kind of say most things that you need to say. Um, now, so that's one thing. Now, another thing for, you know, is um, learn. You need to give yourself tools, right? The tools to learn the language through the language. Well, no, just the tools to use the language, right? Like the tool, um, language is like a tool, right? You can use it to understand things or to interact with people, to get certain things, to give certain things, whatever. Um, you're communicating um, to help um, organize behavior of yourself and others. Now, and I guess being, um, and perception of yourself and others. But um, anyway, so, uh, you know, learn how to say thank you, because that's very useful. Learning how to say, oh, like this is the problem with Duolingo. It's like, oh, the, the crab juice is purple. Like, okay, cool. You know, you're getting some pronunciation and stuff and, words but it's not very useful like you, when you, you're not going to say that you know so learn how to say thank you please 
I'm sorry. Um, so I'm learning a bit of Greek from some you know, some guy at the cafe over the road. So let's say we've got uh, I think is like uh, thank you. Or me a bit uh, a a beer, please. Um, very important. Or uh, say um, Philemon, brother. No, my friend, Philemon. You know, um, whatever, right? So learning things where you're going to use it, and then you can use it in the moment. You're going to get excited. And it's going to make you want to learn the language more, and you're using it, and you can get, you know, um, it helps you operate in the world. So thank you, sorry, um, I don't understand. I understand. I'm good, I'm bad, or um, uh, uh, who, what, when, where, why, how, um, uh, things like, now these are very important, what does that mean? What does that mean? Or, um, uh, c'est quoi le, le sens de ça? Is that how you say it? Like, uh, je, uh, je comprends pas, uh, qu'est-ce que, uh, qu que tu veux dire? Like, I don't understand. Qu'est-ce que tu veux dire? Is it, what do you mean? What do you want to say? Um, and then they can help you. Oh, I mean, blah, blah, blah. And so, th um, or, and another thing, um, like, uh, how do you say, mm, in the language? So, um, kind of sejar for blah, 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 asquelga. How, how would you say da, 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 in Irish? Or comment dit blah, 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 en français? How do you say this thing in French? And so, through the language, you can, um, deal with obstacles and expand your um, vocabulary and grammar, etc., without revert reverting to your native language. You can start to give yourself the home base within the language where you can start to expand it and deal with the problems and pursue the opportunities through the language. And that's when it starts to really accelerate because you're kind of getting deep, like, you know, it's like concentration. You're getting deep into this um, flow of the language um, rather than getting distracted by your brain shifting to the, the old system of how to communicate and think. Um, and so say last night, like, um, I'm at, you know, this pub with a, a beautiful brother and we're, uh, you, know, a, you know, talking to strangers and, um, you know, meeting people and um, uh, in Irish. And, um, you know, my vocabulary is pretty limited, but I'm better than I was, you know. And uh, but I'm talking to people. And so you kind of, uh, what I was thinking, just reflecting on, I would kind of just like, just go into my body and just the moment, you know, and just kind of stop thinking and just um, be there with the people, you know, just mindfulness, just be present, you know, and uh, be here now or whatever and just kind of just let their words wash over you, even if I don't fully understand it. Just like, and then, so I'm just hearing these sounds and then something kind of meaningful is spoken and then I go, oh, and then nothing, 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 and just, you know, just being there with it. And then something else, you go, oh, ah, yeah, yeah, okay. I noticed that too. And then the things, slowly but surely, you know, with, after two minutes or something, there's been maybe 30% of the words or, or maybe fewer um, or less um, I've recognized. And so it's, oh, it's triggered. Is my mind is kind of getting drawn into whatever the topic is slowly. And then once I kind of have the vague idea of the topic, I'm just listening and I kind of, just naturally, I'm kind of aware of the story or whatever's being you know going on or being discussed, and then maybe someone says something like, "Ah, oh, yeah, you know, but uh, oh, he shake character lore." Yeah, like, "Hey, it was all right." I go, "Ah, uh, what do you say? Like, uh, Igoni, Igoni Tashi character lore." I just say, "Ah, always, it's always good." You know, something can just pop into your head just because you're just listening. You're there. And they say something, and you, once you're following enough, little responses will just pop into your head, and you can just vocalize it. And then that's a feedback loop where you go, oh, yeah, da da da. They say something, you go, uh huh. And you can kind of get deeper and deeper into that flow, and things just start flowing. And um, if you have those tools, you can say, how do you say this? Or what does that mean? Or, sorry, um, could you speak s slower? I, I don't understand. Um, and, you know, if you want to take the edge off, make fun of yourself, you know, be like, uh, my little baby brain <laughs> doesn't work. I can't do it. You know, or whatever, you know, whatever floats your boat and makes you feel comfortable practicing. So, um, yes, you can keep books with vocabulary, of course, and, um, uh, word, you know, sentences. Um, so if you want to do that, I would, con I would look up, um, I'd recommend bullet journaling, Bujo, B-U-J-O, Bujo, uh, bullet journaling. Um, it's this uh, kind of thing which was kind of 
innovated slash developed by some guy quite recently, but he had problems with memory. And so he figured out a way to organize himself through like um, a journal. But basically it's like a very clever, very simple way of having a contents page at the front and then you have the numbers of the pages. And so you can have a page where you've got something um, and then but um, you put that list out in the contents page. But then once you've filled up the page, you can go many pages later and just create a, a, another version of it with the same title and it's a different number, but you can like write, uh, and add that to the contents page. So you're creating your own contents page where you can see, okay, um, ver and you could do this for learning for yourself, like, oh, finances or, um, you know, whatever, holiday plans or whatever it is, um, or, you know, m this month, um, you know, August, what are my, what are my plans, you know? You have pages dedicated for these things and then pages of just the normal stuff of what's happening. I did this, I need to do that, things to re remember. Um, so here's my one of this. Uh, let's see here. This is it. So it's like got, you know, pages of whatever I'm doing and, you know. Um, so, but you can do that with, um, have, say, and I've done this for Irish, um, uh, we have verbs, uh, nouns, um, or vocabulary of like uh, weather or um, emotions, you know, things to show where you will remember in groups. You know, it's a good way to learn stuff because it's via meaning. It's all good to be meaningful. So, um, and yeah, you can have that very organized via this um, contents page. And e even like in the bottom corner, if you look at the Bujo method, you could see how, you know, this is done. But on the bottom corner, you can say, okay, this is page 12. You could do slash. 42 and that means um, this continues on page 42 so you don't even need to go to the contents page you can just go between them so anyway but that's like even if you don't use that method keeping a book with vocabulary can be very useful and ideally using like I said the way of the if you know the phonetic um, alphabet then you can just use that for how to you know um, honestly I can't even remember I used to know it um, but then I felt you know it wasn't really worth teaching the students it taking the time to do that I just felt it was unnecessary. So, um, but I, but whatever system you have for, you know, remember knowing how to say the things, use that and say what it means. And um, ideally put it in a, in a sentence, have an example. So you can see it in context. But um, so that can be very good. Um, anything else to mention? Um, uh, yeah, fall in love with someone who uses the language. And you'll uh, you'll be fluent in like you know five minutes ago, you know. So uh, I'd say that's about it for now. All right. Um, how and why to learn a language? Learning a new language, um, and it, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It's really great, and I don't know. Uh, it, uh, it's a great source of joy for me. It's very interesting, and um, just a kind of never. And I think one other thing to mention is it's like kind of a journey. You know, it's not the destination; it's the journey. And so if you're like like, you know, oh, I can't wait to be perfect at this thing. Okay, you know, there might be a place, a time and place for that. But in general, um, you want to be happy like here. I show up. That's all I do. That's my um, rubric for success is like, am I showing up? You know, do, do I go to jujitsu class? It doesn't matter how well I do. Do I, Am I showing up every class? Okay, good. So then you're doing all you need to do, really. Um, everything else is icing on the cake. And say with learning a language, like, okay, um, am I practicing? regularly and that's it that's all you know am i making more oh, i was making more progress last year i don't know why i'm going so slow well who knows why but it doesn't really matter are you doing your best good that's all that matters just keep doing your best and let the universe take care of the rest and you know may you get comfortable in the palm of god's hand you know um and uh yeah and so you know enjoy the progress but more importantly just enjoy using the language and you know, we're life, uh, well, this life that we're in doesn't go last forever. Although I personally believe life does go on after that, but that's another a whole other kettle of rainbow fish altogether. Um, but, uh, you know, while we're here, we have, we, we're this incredible opportunity that we're just floating in space on this beautiful garden stone spinning a million miles an hour. And, you know, you can do all these things and there's all these beautiful languages we can learn and we can express ourselves and experience ourselves and the world. Um, through them and so yeah i think that's that's enough of uh like um i'm looking forward to having better language skills at you know these languages i'm working on but um 
I think the main thing is just like uh, having it in your heart and enjoying, you know, it uh, being it and um, communing with these uh, beautiful kind of organic uh, linguistic superorganisms, which are kind of um, so, uh, yeah, so um, incredibly human insightfully human creations and can teach us a lot about humanity and different cultures and about ourselves and the different aspects of ourselves um, by using them and by you know, learning how to use them. So, all right, that's enough for now. So, um, thank you all. Um, every blessing. Merci uh, beaucoup. Je suis rusty en français. I'm rusty in French, but uh, merci. Uh, et uh, j'espère que vous allez uh, très bien et uh, sans uh, peur, peur uh, pour uh, l'Odyssey, la journée de uh, apprendre les langues. So I hope you are um, happy. What did I say? And uh, you're all enjoying um, the journey of learning languages. So, and yeah, take up a language. Do it, you know. And uh, especially if you want to go somewhere, visit somewhere, traveling, learn a few words, apply this. And um, yeah, let me know if you have questions about specific things. Um, like I say, I am, a, there's actually my job. So I do know like how to more details of like, say in school, the things I talked about were more on your own, but definitely um, getting a teacher, like a tutor, private tutor, or like enrolling in a school. Um, ideally, it should be com um, communicative based where you're pra learning things, but you're, you're speaking to each other. You're using the language. The teacher's not talking too much. Mostly it's the students, the teacher's guiding. That's usually the best way. Um, or Callan method, I highly recommend. Very useful for learning very quickly. Um, for English, this is anyway. But yeah, go learn a language, uh, or I encourage you to continue learning the language you are using. And uh, that's all. So, merci. Garamila Mahagat. Cheers. <laughs>